I've been working on flow today and I thought I would take some time to teach you how to make this specific flow. So what this does is it is set to kick off every day at 8 p.m. And I want to get a list of all of my one opportunities from today. And I simply want to post that message in Teams on a sales channel showing me a simple list of which opportunities were one. So stay tuned and I'm gonna show you how to make this flow. First, we start in our solution file and at the top, we're gonna to click new, automation, Cloudflow, and this one will be scheduled. Remember, we want this to run every single day. So we're gonna define the recurrence as we name our flow here. So one opportunities to Teams. You can call it whatever makes sense. Repeat every, so this is defining our frequency. For this case, we'll do every day, every week might be more appropriate if you're not winning a ton of opportunities every day for your smaller organization. So here's our recurrence. You can come in and click edit if you wanna change it and you can show advanced options. So one thing I do wanna do is uh, set this to run at the same time of day every day. So we're just gonna pick 20 o'clock or 8 p.m. Cool. Next thing, next step. So I'm going to search for Dataverse. So all we've said so far is I want this flow to run every day at 8 p.m. Cool. What's it going to do? All right. So we're going to come here and what we want is list rows because I want a list of all of the opportunities that were won today in Dataverse. So the first step here, um, we're going to list these rows. So in table name, I'm gonna load all the tables here. This includes all of your custom tables and anything that's in your Dataverse universe. And we're gonna select opportunities. All right, easy peasy so far, right? Now we're gonna click show advanced options. And this is where I think it gets a little more complex. Um, and as you come in here, you might see there's a lot of O data in here. I am not an O data, you know, person. I don't speak the Odetta dialect. I don't know it. And in order to get this right, it's going to require checking out a lot of information, a lot of community resources, maybe Microsoft documentation to know how to write no data. Instead of doing that, boy, do I have a time saver for you. You, if you are like me, will head over to the XRM toolbox. You will check out your tools. You will get the Fetch XML Builder built by the amazing Jonas Rapp. If he's watching, he's gonna make fun of how I said that name because he said Americans can't say his name. But anyway, Jonas has created a phenomenal tool called the Fetch XML Builder. I'm gonna show you how to use that to get the O data that we need in order to run Power Automate. So I have selected opportunity from the entity name here. And then we've got quick actions in the center. So I wanna filter because I'm filtering this, right? I'm essentially recreating what I would do to build a system view in CRM, in Dynamics 365. So attribute is a list of all of the columns. So I'm picking actual close date. Um, and for my operator, I'm going all the way to the bottom again. This is identical to what you see in Dynamics in uh, your classic advanced find. So actual close date of today. So any opportunity that has a close date of today, which is cool. Um, and then I also want to grab just to make sure that I'm getting one and not closed. I'm going to add condition and we're going to grab, these are schema names. So state code is my status. So state code, the operator is equals. And then for value, it is, I grabbed the wrong one. Sorry, bad click. Status, state code, apologies. State code equals one. Jonas, thank you for making this so great. So you can execute and it's going to show you the data that's going to come back if you want to get eyes on that and just see. But what you really want that's going to save your time is this convert button and power automate parameters. Here is what loads and we're looking for this filter. You're just going to click the text that's here, minimize. And now in filter rows, we're going to come in here and just paste exactly what we got out of this amazing tool in the XRM toolbox. Isn't that cool? Um, so that's the first step. Then we have select columns, right? So what this is going to return are all of the columns of my one opportunities, which might be a little more than what you want. So if you want to further, you know, delve down the information that you're going to have, all you have to do is enter schema names again on that select column. So let's say I want the topic. So that would be the name. Um, and we'll do actual value. 
because that's good information too. So we're going to keep it really simple. You can make this more complex if you like. Um, you can also sort by. Um, you can use the same OData information here. So you can see I've got the table, the filter. If I want to do a sort by, I can certainly come in here in the tool and start to add additional information here in the queries um, and get that in OData language too. Also fetch XML if you prefer that. So we're good, right? This works great. We're going to hit save. And I am just going to show you how beautifully this works by performing a quick test. I know all we've done is configure the first points, but it's kind of nice to see it in action. So we're going to test manually. I know that I have three records in my environment that I've created and one today. So this should bring back three records. So we can click done and then see the progress of this flow. Make sure it's running great. Yay, it ran successfully. Um, and then it starts to show me the information. So here's my outputs. It's, it's a lot of information, right? Hmm, not really the data format that I wanted. So that brings us to the next step back on Airflow Canvas. So let's head back to the Canvas and go to the next step. So we need a better data format before we post this on a Teams channel, right? So we're going to click Next Step. And we're going to go to built in in the operations. And this is where we use something called data operation. Now, I can't claim to be an expert on the actions in here. There are pretty much two that I understand. Create an HTML table and select. And guess what? Those are the ones we're going to use. So we're going to hit select. Um, and we're going to take the information here from our prior content. So we're going to go to the value. So that's the list of items. So I want to select the list of items. Now I'm going to build a map. So I'm going to like define the columns. I don't need everything here. So enter key. That's going to be what do I want like the column header to be when I eventually get there. So that'd be subject. Oops. And enter value. I'm going to scroll down here and here's my list rows, dynamic values again. Um, and what I want here is the topic. And then I think the other one I said was actual revenue. So actual revenue, again, type, click in, enter value, and we're going to scroll down until we find our dynamic value. Awesome. And save. So again, just to kind of show you the process of our data transformation, let's click test and we're going to run this flow and I'm going to show you what it looks like now. It's better, but it's still not where we're going to want it to be. So we're going to run flow, click done, and that's going to show us what's happening. Now, if I were building this flow out for the actual solution, I wouldn't take the time to kind of test through and do all this. Um, I just want to show you that it's not quite what I want yet. So here is our output. It's got the right information. Yay. Now it's showing me subject and what it is and actual revenue and what it is. Well, that's pretty good. It's just, again, a data formatting issue. That's not what I want to present to the end users in Teams. So what can we do next? Well, Let's click next step. We're going to use the same built-in connector data operation, but this time I want to create a table. So all I have to do here um, in create a table is grab the dynamic content from my other select. So we're going to scroll down. Here's our select. Here's our output. You can click show advanced options. Um, we're going to keep automatic columns for this because we've already defined our columns here of subject and actual revenue. So again, just to show you how our data transformation continues with all of these new things we do, let's save and let's test. Um, and I'll show you that this will give us, should give us exactly what we're looking for. A nice, easy to digest and understand simple table that my users can understand. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just the thing of beauty. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That is what I want. I'm ready to rock and roll. The last step is to post a Teams message. Post Teams. Post a message in a chatter channel. So you can post as the Flowbot or a user. I like the Flowbot. I think it's cool. And then post in. We're going to select a channel, a chat, or a group chat. So I want this in a channel. Um, and then this is where it gets more dynamic, right? This is going to change based on your team structure and how you have it set up. I'm going to select a team here. I'm going to select a sales team that I have. 
And then I want to put this in the general channel message. Um, we're just going to pull that table in, right? Well, let's say new opportunities one today. Go team. And then we're grabbing the output from the HTML table. So one last time together, we're going to save. And then we're going to test. And we're going to click done. And we can see that the flow is running spectacularly, beautifully. And our message in the chat or channel is bam. There it is. There's my one I did earlier before I recorded. So this all worked really well, right? So now every day at 8 p.m. this is scheduled to run. So today it was because we were testing and manually testing and pushing it through. But every day from here on out at 8 p.m. my sales channel is going to get a little post here from the Flowbot letting us know the new one opportunities. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this makes sense. And if you liked this, there's going to be many more things just like this coming up at two of the sessions that I'll be at this fall. I will be presenting how to extend your Dynamics 365 CRM system using Power Automate. So this is one of the flows that you'll see. Um, I'm hoping, I'm working right now to put together what we're calling a Power Automate starter kit with flows like this. So if you come to my session, I'm going to give you these flows that you can use and that will be hopefully helpful to get you up and running using Power Automate to extend your CRM system. So let me know what you think of this, if you have any questions, and any other flows that you might want to see that take CRM and extend it outside of CRM. And maybe that will be the next video that I make, and that will be part of the Power Automate Toolkit, and you can have it for free.